Dobre dan, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I doesn't speak <laughs> a Slovenian language, so I hold my presentation in English. I hope this is not a big problem, but don't worry. I try to give you impressions, more impressions than to give a, a fundamental lecturing in uh, ultra high performance concrete. So I try to make more than a picture book how you can proceed with UHPC, especially with Ductal. You know Ductal is our product from the company, from Lafarge. Um, it was uh, a patent till the year, last year. Last year the patent expired, and so it's generally free for use. Um, what means high performance concrete? You hear in the lectures before exactly words like high strength concrete. High strength concrete, this is clear because you have uh, compressive strength in a definite range. 60, 70 megapascal, but on the end, what means high performance? High performance could be mean all or nothing, yeah? Because normally, you think high performance means also high strains. That is not the case, yeah? Because high strains have uh, additional properties. I try to cluster high performance. When you deal with high performance, you have to definite before, before you start to plan which properties you want. You want high strains and additional properties. You see it here like performance, like strains or workability. Yeah? Performance could be permeability from on the one hand, your grid diffusion, corrosion and so on. Yeah? All different kind of properties. And on the strains you can decide between ordinary, ordinary concrete, high performance concrete or high strains concrete and ultra high performance concrete. And also the workability is interesting for concrete, not only the strains, not only that what Professor Lopatic mean from strains as a designer he needed, yeah, but for you and, and, when, and in a uh, uh, company, for you is important the workability, so how, you, you, how to proceed or how to place the concrete, it's conventionally, it's easy compacted or it is a self-leveling concrete on the end. This is also what you see before from Professor Lopatic. Yeah, it is a division of, of, of the classes from, from, from compressive strains. Ductal is nearly between 140 and 250 megapascal. Super high performance concrete means yeah, strains more than 300 megapascal, but this is more in hybrid material in combination with steel. Yeah. Also, this is a figure you see before. It's important to reduce the porosity. Porosity, reduction of the porosity means increasing of the durability. Yeah, that is, on the end, it's the magic thing behind all these concretes. Um, the compressive strains from Ductal, what means, uh, is nearly about 200 megapascal. It depends from the mix design, what you want. You can order it in different strains, whatever you want. Maximum is 250 megapascal. Normally, what we sold, sold, uh, sold sorry, um, about 150 and 200 megapascal. Important thing from Ductal, and that is also the reason why we call it Ductal. You have here now this post cracking behavior. Yeah, it's not abruptly, but you know, so it's you, know, you have an announcement of the of the failure. Yeah, and this is very important. That is the reason why we say it's Ductal. Yeah, it's ductil, ductility. From that is the way why we get the name for this material. Um, additionally, a big thing is that you don't need normally reinforcement for ultra high performance concrete. You use special uh, steel fibers and now and you replace or dynamic uh, um, uh, reinforcement with the steel fibers and we get a bending strain of about 35 megapascal. It depends on the uh, quantity of fibers you use. That is the yeah, riddle behind all of them. Now to get a better imagination how what means to work with ductal, it's similar with steel. Yeah? Here are the comparison to reinforced or pre stressed concrete, so it's similar to ductal. Ductal is generally not, or ultra high performance, is not a, a, com a, a competition to an ordinary concrete element. Yeah? This would never be. Ultra high performance is generally a competition to steel or aluminium, yeah? so for lightweight structures. Yeah, comparison of the grain size here from our ordinary concrete here, high performance concrete maximum, you have 60 millimeters and the grain size of ultra high performance you see here is um, maximum we have two millimeters, but bed is one millimeter. Yeah, this is the maximum for using ultra high performance concrete. Here the constituents, uh, Andrea Ipavets also told you about these things, yeah, what's 
absolutely necessary, of course, microsilica or nanosilica, whatever you want, and these are the steel fibers yeah, as reinforcement. Yeah? And here the plasticizer, you heard it before. Yeah, you can use uh, these polypropylene fibers or here metallic fibers. You can also make a mix between, it's a composition. Uh, uh, fiber cocktail, we say it's special fiber cocktail. When you need fire resistance, it's uh, constraint necessary to use these polypropylene fibers. What is also not easy when you manufacture uh, ultra high performance, yeah, you look here the sequences of this mixing process. At first, you have a, a dry mix, then you put water inside, and it's only dry. Yeah? And you say, where is the water? And how could this be a plastic concrete? Yeah? For that, you need a mixing time from about 10 minutes to get from this consistency to this consistency. Yeah? So you need a lot of energy inside in, 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 in kind of friction energy. Yeah? Yeah. Normally, you stopped at 0.06 when you investigate the, uh, the sieve size distribution and for ultra high performance it's also important or it's especially important to also investigate the sieve size distribution under this uh, border. Now I give you some impressions. Um, I do these pictures or I do this uh, movie when I worked at the university. Normally I do this with ordinary concrete but it was also a special test to do this with, with ultra high performance concrete and now you see the difference. I hope it works. No, it doesn't work. That is always when I try to present a movie, I get in problems. Maybe because it is very interesting, I can show it from outside. These are normal tests. I hope it works. You know, the more strains the concrete is, the more dangerous uh, the concrete against fire attack. Ah, I say yes. It doesn't work? No. Ah, okay. Then I leave it. It would be very interesting. But it's okay. So, how you can proceed with ductile? You can use it as a precaster. That's predominated to use it in pre as precast elements, but you can also use it on site as a ready mix concrete. In general, you have to order this premix directly in France, directly in Paris. Now I see some impressions about applications, how you can proceed. The first you see here, first pictures here, it's uh, in, as on, directly on site, made directly on site or here also made in a plant or you, you produce it directly on, on site with a small agitating device. Some examples, the Candarus uh, Dam in France, it's in an, nothing else than an overlay from, 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 uh, yeah, from, from, from this surface. It's an increasing of the, of the shear forces as a resist to increase the resistance. Yeah? Uh, I think it was uh, between 5 and 10 centimeter in thickness. Yeah? And the hardening time was 20 days. Next application was uh, also a ductile UHPC overlay here in Switzerland. You also increase the, 
stiffness of the construction and it was also a protection against water intrusion. On the end, it's a ceiling for the surface because this structure has problems with alkali silica reactions and they use four centimeters overlay with ductile. Here, um, yeah, a semi precast element to fill the joints, also a possibility how you use uh, UHPC. Here, for increase the stiffness and or the bearing capacity in high rise buildings, yeah, two centimeters. That's important yeah, because of the height, yeah, you don't lose height, and this is important. And also, the weight is important for the earthquake resistance. Here, a um, completely precast bridge built in Paris 2013, and not only for pedestrian, also for the normal traffic. Uh, you know, maybe some, some bridges with UHPC only for pedestrian mm, uh, way. Now, this is also for the normal traffic possible now. It's not so long, it's only nine meters in Spain, but it's the first time. Also, the Pont de Diable in Montmartre, uh, it's, it's only uh, a small, uh, yeah, it's a pedestrian bridge, but it's nice from the shape. Yeah, you see this once more later on, and also you can use this especially for the architects under the auditory. Yeah, you can use different colors, you can use different shapes for cladding and drawn whatever you want. Here's someone in in Paris in the middle of Paris with white cement. Now here you see this special cladding. And here, yeah, cladding panels with, with a knobbed surface. Yeah. Or here, you can use this as sun sheds. Yeah. And this is all for um, especially interesting these bone structures. Yeah. Or here, like this. The advantage of this, co uh, of this concrete is that you have a durability of le at least 100, in 100 years and no maintenance. Yeah. And this is the advantage from concrete against other materials, especially steel. Yeah, some other uh, applications here, the Lille Museum in France. Perforated structures from the backside. Over here, Morocco. Here, maybe a possibility for balconies. Very thin structures, this is the advantage of the materials. Three centimeters, maximum four centimeters, not more. Yeah. Roofs, different kind of roofs, very thin structures. Uh, another roof, or here, a train station. Uh, the application, the assembling of single elements to a complete structures. You see this here, a sketch of them. And this is a very nice. Example, it is the Champollion Stadium in, in, in Paris with this, yeah, how can I say, with these perforated structures. Yeah. On the high end, on high end performance, I would say. And here is clear, you don't have to need maintenance. Yeah. It must be you build it one time and this, that was it. Yeah. Here, the possibility to manufacture. Maybe this is also well suited for 3D printers. You know, in futures, maybe we also work with 3D printers, and this material this is well fitted for that. Yeah, you see the assembling. The advantage is also that you have not heavy weight, <coughs> and so you need not much big devices to lift them. Also, for my opinion, it's the best project is the museum in Marseille. Also, these perforated structures. It's a high effort to the planner, to the designer, before to do this. You see here, yeah, it's a wonderful harmony yeah, with the waves and with the mountains behind them. And here, this is the bridge, what you see before Montpellier. They used the mold for second time for, for this museum. As connection link. Uh, see here this bridge once more. 
I do also some applications in Austria before it is allowed to to get the concrete. It's not so easy to order concrete or ductile, especially ductile, before you need a certification. And for the certification, people or colleagues from Paris come, look at your plant, if it is able to do, do you have the right equipment for mixing and so on and so on. And then you get the certification and this is such a certification process for router. Yeah, and this is the lady who is responsible for UHPC. Yeah. We add the fibers here manually because we have no additional device for them. It's also possible. It's not a big problem. Yeah. But at least you need 10 minutes. There's an own mixing process yeah, for to, to, uh, to mix this concrete. And what we do is now this double D shape. As a pedestrian bridge, yeah, and this was the result of them. You see, it's a wonderful surface, it's faced air, a faced surface. <coughs> and this is that what I do for myself. It's the entrance in Vienna, in the headquarter of Vienna. I do this also, this cladding with UHPC. Maybe you can see it really exactly. But this is a very smooth surface. I use plexiglass as a mold, and so you get really nice surfaces with them. Yeah? And it's also easy to use this as a shadow light effect. Yeah, that was a short overview for Tuktal, and I end with our slogan in Austria that means forever concrete. Thank you very much.